Race number one, about to get ready to go here. Matt Duncan and Sam Curtis with the front row as we're waiting for the green. There it is. And we are off for round 15. Race number one here as Duncan gets a good start over the 19 of Sam Curtis. Matthew Stringer looking for a potential second position here into turn one, which will certainly be a corner that prefers the inside here. Stringer might be able to get it. Nope, not quite. Sam Curtis holding him off so far. Flat out through there. In through two. Coming towards up through turn number three. Zachary Fitzwater going for a dive on Nick Pericles. Uh, Fitzwater with a surprisingly good qualifying effort and might get his way into fourth early on here. Both of the Duncans inside the top eight in qualifying. Curtis ran a little bit wide in turn number five. Here comes Stringer up the outside, in fact, going into turn number six. Turn six, the most treacherous on this course, argued by the drivers. Um, a nasty uh, section here where it's a right, an immediate left while you go down a hill and then a wide sweeping out right. That corner really catches a lot of drivers out. Apparently it's not very grippy as Andy Thomas has actually gone off the road, I believe. It was actually Tyler Markell who made it into the second part of the corner, dipped down, got into Cameron Gadu, and simply spun right off into the gravel trap. The battle for second is on as Duncan pull pulls way into the distance. And it's Fitzwater who breaks a little bit early. Curtis runs way off of the road, and Stringer squeezes between them, not really letting the 19 back on. Quite an aggressive move for the first lap, but he, it looks like he's going to make it stick here. If he can just get back um, in front of Fitzwater before this uh, left-right complex, uh, before we come back down to the start-finish line on this very fast four-mile road course. Three wide down towards the start finish line to end lap number one. Chan tried squeezing Terrence Day down underneath the uh, underneath the white line rather, uh, but Day was adamant about getting that position. Sidney Crast a force to uh, give up the position to uh, to Zeus Morrow after he runs into the dirt. Chan runs off quite a bit there in the 07 car, and because of that, Terrence Day and Zeus Morrow the big winners on that. But Zeus Morrow is not done in that 17 car going after the 55 now as we are three wide. Uh, coming down the hill first and then up the hill on the exit of turn number four. Maxwell Chan and Alex Tanker continue to race side by side. Tanker, not known to be a road racer, but he's doing pretty well so far. Well inside the top 10 is that number 15 uh, car. Gerald Reddington having a remarkably bad uh, start to this race. He qualified very poorly and so far has not really been able to take uh, to up his position very much. Still sitting in 32nd position. Oh, I think that's Allie Nelson who's well off the road there in that number 9 car. We'll have to take a look at that. The 9 car was in the dirt and when she got to the right-hander turn number 9, she just couldn't get that thing turned in time and runs well off the racing service, loses a ton of positions, managed to get get back on without any contact with the wall, but will be well behind uh, where she'd like to be at this point, I'm sure. Nick Pericles has cracked the top five in that number eight car, doing well so far for himself. Uh, William Duncan gets just a tiny bit off into the dirt. It's so easy to do that at this track. It's so quick, and if, you j and if you're just a tiny bit offline into the one of the corners, there you go, you're right off. As the 44 will continue in third, Stringer has put a gap on uh, on third through fifth here and is closing in on that number 99. Seems like he has a car uh, to be reckoned with so far this race. So oh, Matt Duncan runs off the road. Stringer might get an opportunity here if he can uh, get up alongside uh, the 99 into turn number six. A really big passing opportunity through here for the 87 car. Uh, the 87 looking good so far. The 99 squeezes him out. Out of the corner, they make just a little bit of contact, and the 99 will hold on. And But I'm sure that corner was very slow as suddenly Fitzwater, who was several seconds back, is now uh, probably within drafting range of those top two. Into turn one, we've got a big pack fighting for around 20th position. Michael Kane's in that. He's probably having North African uh, campaign flashbacks with the amount of sm uh, dust in the air. Uh, Kane alongside Jose Bautista for the position will lose a few spots it appears here as oh we're three wide there as Cameron Gadu squeezes between James Zilverfox who ran wide and Michael Kane who's just you know slow 
uh, as per usual. Uh, Cameron Cadu picks up a couple of spots in very impressive fashion. No, no. Uh, the 75 back around him in turn number five. Impressive job by Kane. I thought he was slow. Uh, perhaps not so much, at least at this point in the race uh, for that uh, for the driver of the number 75 car. Fitzwater just drove by Matthew Stringer for second place through turn number one. Now going after the 99 of Matt Duncan into two. Will he be able to make it stick? Hard to say at this point, but the 99 gets a, good, a solid run off the corner uh, in that in that uh, Ford Mustang down into four, and he will grab that position back. The 44 is going to be all over him, though, probably into turn number six. As Matthew Stringer well off the road in that number 87 car, and that will separate the top two from uh, hi uh, himself, and now he will be under attack from William Duncan in the six who so far has made his way up into fifth, looking for more though. In that number six, actually might be able to get third here from the 87 car if he's able to hold him off and keep Nick Pericles behind him. Fitzwater with a good run off of nine, uh, trying to get him on the outside into turn number 10. Very tricky place to uh, place to pass this is, but so far he's managed to do a, so a pretty good job in that number 44 car, keeping it clean but also uh, tr doing his best to perhaps uh, get the lead. Not going to be able to do so, but they're coming down the long front straight away here. He slips in back behind the number 99 for now, and Matt Duncan will continue to lead uh, all of the race's laps. Several seconds back of Maxwell Chan. We are two wide uh, across the start finish line for around 13th place, Zeus Morrow. And Matthew Nicholson continue racing side by side with Jeff Derry, Sidney Crasta. I believe that's J.R. Fitzpatrick just behind. Oh no, that's Don Thompson Jr. rather. As as Nicholson ran well off. And it's Crasta, Engritz, and Nicholson three wide through turn number two. Only way to avoid some of the uh, some getting some of the uh, dust in, uh, in in the cameras and obstructing the view is to go on the helicopter cam there as Nicholson and Krasta continue racing over the hill to get pro I think they might have actually gotten a tiny little bit of air time there in those machines. Jeff Derry well, uh, runs off in turn number five and Nicholson through to go and challenge Andreas Allen, it, it does appear. Jeff Derry, Derry swerves back in front, tries getting in front of Don Thompson Jr. is unsuccessful there, but hold, holds up, holds up uh, Sidney Krasta really bad in that number 21 car, 102 uh, has a slow exit, and now it's the 21 alongside you. Look at Andrew Rick, though. He might get three or four positions here, uh, just simply of uh, running his own line through there, not getting stuck behind anyone else, and it's a pretty ferocious battle through that wide, sweeping right-hander uh, under the World Challenge sign and into turn number nine. Reddington side-by-side -side with Michael Kane into turn number nine, right behind Kim Markell. These three have always seemed to be uh, around each other this whole race. Michael Kane runs off the road. Gerald Reddington gets into the 02 car and nearly slaps the uh, the inside wall in turn number nine. DJ Curtis and James Silverfox forced it three wide through turn number 10. And Ger uh, uh, Gerald Reddington gets way off the gas pedal trying to keep out of trouble in that number 112 car. But will lose quite a few positions here. Is still getting passed by, I believe that's Allie Nelson in the number nine. Uh, she hasn't really recovered from her earlier incident. Julian Sanchez and, and uh, DJ Harris also racing for that position. Uh, somebody came into the pits. That was DJ Curtis coming in for what I'm hearing is a scheduled pit stop. Looking off the rear of William Duncan here in the number six car. He is currently in sixth. Nope, fifth. Zachary Fitzwater just sacrificed second place to make his pit stop of the race. Terrence stayed dangerously far off the racetrack in that number 55 car, past the dirt and well into the grass. He will come back on the racetrack, losing three or four positions there in that number 55 car. Hard battle behind uh, behind uh, Duncan, it appears, with Sam Morrow, Alex Tanker, J.R. Fitzpatrick, and Richard Trelinski going after it. At the halfway mark, Matt Duncan continues to lead. Nick Pericles obtains second after Fitzwater makes his pit stop. Stringer just behind in third, although quite a bit off the pace of Duncan, it does appear. Uh, Stringer might have used up his tires just a little bit too fast, and because of that, he'll, he'll be on worn tires for the remainder 
of uh, whatever he chooses, uh, however many more laps he chooses to make on that set of tires is probably recommended for him to go in as soon as possible, but he stays out at least one more lap. Into lap number 10, the 8, taking a look on the number 99, an ambitious move into turn number 1 will not make that stick, and the 99 continues with the lead. All three of the, of the podium runners at the moment ran into the dirt. Stringer, the least the, uh, of the three, he might get the position, make it, might get second from the 8, looking on the number 99, but will not be able to make that move stick at the moment. Here comes the 8 car back though in a good battle for second just behind Duncan. Duncan may not have the fastest car and Stringer might not have used up his tires. It does appear as I had stated just a lap and a half ago. Uh, you know, just a little bit of a failure there. Anyway, Stringer still uh, still racing side by side with the 8 car down into turn number 6. Uh, Duncan pulling away as these two continue, uh, continue side by side through this corner. It's really nasty. Oh, as the 87 and the 8 get together there. As I was saying, it's really nasty to run side by side through there. You lose a ton of time on the drivers that run single file through there. And because of that, even though the 87 got the position back from the 8, he is well back of the number 99 uh, of the 99 of Matt Duncan as he heads into turn number 9 to complete lap number 10 here. Behind Ryder Smith, it's a bit of a sped fight here uh, for around 20th position. James Silverfox runs off the road. The 9 of Ali Nelson trying to pick up a few spots here. Cameron Gadu and Kim Markell gets hel get held off. At when Silverfox merges back onto the racetrack, Markell gets loose over the hill, and Gadu makes it three wide for that position. Very ambitious and ultimately unsuccessful here as the 0-2 of Kim Markell will get that position back, becoming the third car in this group. Uh, Sanchez drew uh, to become the fourth, uh, the fourth car of this group, and, uh, and Shrimp Engritz and Sidney Krasta race for around 25th position. Oh, contact between the 102 and the 21 will give the 44 uh, a couple of positions here. I'm sure the 44 has been uh, held up a little bit by this hard racing, and it'll be really interesting to see where he ends up uh, once uh, pit stops cycle th finally cycle through here in a few more laps. Despite his strong start, William Duncan in the number six appears not to have a car that will be contending for the race victory here today uh, without a whole lot of luck and a, a, and a fantastic pit stop coming up here as he is currently nine seconds back of the, the race leader and Alex Hanger just got around him for fourth. Duncan r runs really wide through turn eight at number eight as the leaders Nick Pericles uh, just ran off going into turn number nine and he's well back of Matthew Stringer who himself is quite a bit back of Matt Duncan. Coming to four to go, here comes the field. Duncan in uh, from first position, Stringer in, Nick Pericles, the whole top three in. Let's see if anyone tries to gamble by staying out one more lap. Oh, Tanker very slow coming in and Duncan actually clips the back of him uh, coming into the pits. No one staying out so far. Richard Trelinski. Oh, a bit, a bit near, some near crash, uh, near crash there as J.R. Fitzpatrick nearly got into somebody who is coming onto pit road. As these two will take over the top two positions temporarily. J.R. Fitzpatrick and Andreas Allen, your top two. With three to go, all of the top three, that being all of the cars that had stayed out, uh, the extra lap uh, came, finally came in for their final pit stops. Duncan off the road, and Nick Pericles is right behind him. As we come into turn number one, he, sorry, turn number two, he's going for it here in the number eight car. He needs the number 99 to not get a, as good of a run as he usually does out of that corner. He runs wide, and the eight, that might be exactly what the eight car needs into turn number four, and up the hill he goes in that number eight car. He might be able to clear him if he can just get down between, before turn number five. Yes, he does. And Nick Pericles, finally, the first driver to get by the number 99 uh, this whole race. Contact between the 02 and the Shri and Shrimp Engritz in the 102 sends, sends Engritz into the wall and a severely damaged back end will probably send him limping back to the pits at the end of this lap. The number 99 trying to pull the reversal here on the number 8 car with just two laps to go. Nearly gets into his quarter panel there into turn number 3 up the inside, but this this attempt appears 
to be unsuccessful here. The eight runs off the road, but manages to sweep it up, uh, up in front of the number 99. Uh, Matt Duncan giving it everything he got. Uh, he's got though. He's he's led most of this race, and it would, I'm sure it would be very upsetting to him if he if he ends up second after all of that. But he just ran into the grass, and that will give a huge lead to the number eight of Nick Pericles. In the end, some of the big losers of the day appear to be drivers like Don Thompson Jr. and Terrence Day, guys who were up inside the top ten when we started uh, this race. Um, about a half an hour ago, uh, who are currently at the tail end of the of the top 20s. Terrence Day, probably out of frustration, sends the 17 car off. That wasn't very friendly, but I don't think he'll get a penalty for that. Uh, Kim Markell in the 02, just behind not having a great run either, <laughs> trying to get underneath the 17, giving it everything, everything she's got, despite it being pretty much all for nothing here. Duncan may have led the most laps of the race, but in the end, it will be Nick Pericles coming down to the start-finish line. Duncan in his draft, but not nearly close enough to make a move stick. Nick Pericles makes the pass with just three laps to go and will claim his first career victory here uh, in Grand Terre, the eastern island of Guadalupe. Duncan a close second, certainly something to be proud of uh, for, uh, for uh, Team Thunder there. Uh, Zachary Fitzwater in the number 44 will come across the line in third position. A great day for him all around. Sam Curtis, fourth position in that number 19 car. Never had a car that really competed for the win, but he had a solid pit stop and maintained uh, a top five at the end here. Stringer, fifth position for him. Had a car that could have uh, that looked like it, it was going to win early on, but in the end fell off just a little bit. Fifth place, not a bad effort. Sixth is Alex Hanker in the 15 car. Richard Jelinski is seventh in the 71. Maxwell Chan, a great run for him in eighth place. Ma uh, William Duncan finally has some good fortune and comes across the line in ninth. And Matthew Nicholson in the number four will claim 10th position. Alex Allen gets his first pole of the year uh, in that 49 machine. The 06 of Sean Morrison on his outside. Uh, he got the pole actually in South Africa. Not too much of a surprise to see him uh, doing well in qualifying here in Grand Terre as we head down into turn number one. A very equal match between Allen and Morrison. Morrison might get the run off the corner, but they're still flat out as they head through two. Uh, that's Sawyer Girl who ran out wide just slightly. Chris Washer still on the back end of the 49, looking to pounce should these two hold each other up too much longer. And they stay side by side. Sean Morrison might be able to clear him, though, before we ha get to four. Sawyer Girl taking a look on the 49 for second. A lot of the field's more experienced drivers started near the front of this race. Bill Littlejohn started third, Mark Nutt. Uh, is back currently back around sixth position as is Carlin Dumian. Mike Doan, who's currently third in points, I do believe he's at the very least in the top five. But uh, Mike Doan uh, looking to have a good run, perhaps getting himself well up towards the points lead here with Gerald Reddington finishing very poorly in race number one and Nicholas Amadio more than ten spots behind him currently on track. Allen managed to hold off a charging Sawyer Girl through turns five and six, but since then he's received some challenges from both Girl and Chris Washer in the five, a driver who has had a remarkable comeback from the early part of the season where he was near dead last. In fact, he was dead last in points after, um, after I believe it was Waltham, uh, Massachusetts, uh, but now he resides well inside the top ten in points. He's in fact a championship contender, many do believe, but Alex Allen pushed back into fourth position, being overtaken by Washer and Girl early on here as we complete lap number one. Luca Obrovac in the three botched up the final corner on the course, turn number 10 there, the, the, left, the quick left right there before heading on to the extremely long uh, front straightaway here. 
Chris Louvier somehow managed to squeeze up on the outside of both of them and he will he will quickly grab those two positions. Will Hoyt looking to do the same here, but be getting stuck behind Bejianov as we head up the hill and down the hill once again into turn number one. Back up front, Amin Al Ghul has taken over the third position in the number 96 car. The Jordanian driver still, of course, looking for his first career win. Alex Wheeler just ran off the road in turn number five after encountering some pressure from the 49 of Alex Allen. Allen back into fourth. And Mark Nutt will make his way into the top five for the first time this race. Battling for the all-important position of 32nd, Ty Dent and Daniel Voiles got together. Voiles just ran it far too hard into the exit of turn six, got into the side of Dent. Dent manages to continue, but Voiles will be stuck in the gravel trap, now finally able to get back out to the racetrack now. Another driver that's having a a pretty crappy start to the race is Tyler Faber in the 12 car, the Doritos machine. Um, looks like he needs some Mountain Dew sponsorship in order to perform those MLG 360 no scopes that he is so fond of. Both Prudence and Bill Littlejohn taking their dirt track racing skills to a whole new level here in turn number one as they run well off the course. I know you like dirt tracks, that's good but you don't have to make a road course a dirt track. That, I don't, that doesn't work. I'm sorry, I, I'm sorry. But Kerry Davis is now trying to get his way by the 30 to take over, I believe that's 14th place. Despite his off-road adventures, um, Bill Littlejohn does still seem to be having a pretty solid day, though he has lost many positions from the very start of the race where he started third, Pichu London, doing some rally cross as well. Just behind London, we have a pack of cars that you normally really don't see at the tail end of the field on a road course. Demir Bejianov is having an awful start to the race. He's currently in 20th, around 20th place. James O'Shea back here as well. Will Hoyt's back here, and that's not so much of a surprise. Uh, Al uh, Discover Alaska Autosports has not had the greatest of a start. Well, I say start, but we're at round 15, nearly three quarters in, uh, of the way into the season. And that team really has not shown a ton of speed outside the first few laps. Are they four wide back there? They were temporarily three wide. Ty Dent looked like he was going to make it four. Luckily got out of the gas there. And suddenly, Faber finally got that Mountain Dew sponsorship because he's making up some spots in that number 12 machine. Zach Riel, Chris Louvier, and Bill Littlejohn, three wide into turn number three. Looks like they're going to be able to make it work. But Chris Louvier might be the big beneficiary. He has a good run off the corner despite getting into the dirt, and he will defend his position uh, up through three and into four. Look at old Rovac taking a peek on Zach Riel for 16th position now as Bill Littlejohn races uh, with Pichu London just behind. London into the back of Littlejohn, and Littlejohn sent off the road and into the wall. Manages to keep that car going, but he's, I'm sure he's got some damage to that 30 car, and he will lose a ton of spots, being overtaken by the likes of Ophelia and Dumian and Fall of Thanos into turn number six. An interesting move by Sean Morrison as he pits very early on at the end of lap number five. This pit stop is scheduled, I'm hearing, but uh, Morrison's going to have an interesting time. Uh, he needs to make sure he doesn't end up like Zachary Fitzwater in race number one, getting stuck behind um, the slower traffic before they complete their pit stops. Other drivers in very early include Bill Littlejohn in the 30 car. That's not much of a surprise. He's probably repairing the damage that he received that last lap, as well as Chris Lubier in the 98 car. Uh, he he uh, pits very early as well, looking for some track position later on. TJ Den gets around Sawyer Girl out out of turn number six to take over sixth position. Sawyer Girl just behind in seventh, then Johnny Appleseed and Mark Nutt battle for seventh. Uh, Mark Nutt's had a pretty successful day so far, still making up positions in the lads racing machine number zero car. Uh, Brandon Crasta is just behind, still inside the top ten. Alex Wheeler and Carlin Dumian go, going for the final spot of the top ten at the moment. Faber and Den side by side into turn number six, going for 27th position, and Faber slides up into Dent, tries to save it, Dent will continue on again, that's his second major hit, oh, Fullerton into Faber, 
out of the corner. Faber was right in the middle of the racing line, and Fullerton simply couldn't swerve out of the way in time. Um, some damage to both of those cars. They should be able to continue in, on in the race, but likely they will be well off the pace. London and Krasta are side by side for P11. Terry Davis and Obrovac racing just behind for 13th. Davis around after contact from Obrovac. Obrovac keeps his foot in it and manages to get that thing back on course. London with a very slow turn 10. But Kerry Davis, I'm sure, is not going to be too happy about that. He will continue on with fairly minimal damage, I do believe, in that 101 car. He will lose a ton of spots, though. Closing in very quickly on pit stops now. We're on lap 11 and the majority of the field in race number one pitted at the end of lap number 12. Spencer Fullerton is uh, going a lap down here to the number five. Quite a feat, considering... Uh, laps here take nearly two minutes in length, but of course Fullerton had to come in to repair some of that damage. And this gives Amin Al Ghul an opportunity to finally uh, get alongside the five and he, he will clear him into turn number seven. Uh, he's got to make sure the five doesn't get a crossover move going here into turns eight and nine, those two right-handers um, before the, the left-right and the front straightaway. Washer's a lot back alongside him out of nine. And Washer might have the preferred line here through 10. And he's got it on the number 96. The 96 runs off the road just a tiny bit on entry to the corner. Bit unusual there. But Chris Washer will continue with the lead. Amin Al Ghul very close in tow. Due partially to the pit stops that have occurred already. And, and due partially to just simply running well. A lot of the drivers I was talking about earlier as having... Quite poor days, back around 25th position, are now just outside the top 10. Uh, quite a pack here. Demir Bejanov and Marcus Stroman side by side into turn number one. Everyone stays on course for once. That's that's a feat in itself, it appears, here at this racetrack. Tristan Wilhoit looking to squeeze it in between Stroman and Bejanov. I don't know whether that'll be successful. We haven't seen uh, a driver be able to squeeze it between the middle of two drivers in that section of the course and get something done, but he's gotten around Marcus Stroman. Stroman forced to give up the position and perhaps yet another to James O'Shea in the 03 car. Oh, the 11's got to make sure he doesn't run wide, doesn't hit the dirt, and he may get Bajian off going into turn six. Yes, he does. Tristan Wilhoit up into 11th place. Washer's pitting this time, we're hearing, as he drives by Louvier. Louvier's really off the pace. I think he's got a mechanical failure in that number 98 car. It's a shame, but he wasn't having too good of a run uh, here today, up around 27th place um, when he had that failure. And Washer put a hell of a gap on Amin Al Ghul on that last lap before the pit stops. Amin Al Ghul would have, probably would have been better off coming in last lap. Looks like he used his, stu his tires up just a little bit early trying to get by Washer. And Wheeler in just in front of Al Ghul. Al Ghul loses a little bit of time on that pit stop. And Washer comes back out onto the racetrack. He has got to make sure he doesn't hit that wall. It's very easy to as he comes back out. A lot of drivers actually stay out here. And he merges right in front of uh, Ophelia and Dumian and Nicholas uh, Samadio in the 47 car. Those, those drivers yet to make their pit stops. The question is, though, where is Sean Morrison in, in in relation to Chris Washer after pitting so early on? Did his strategy pay off? And it appears that it hasn't here, as he merged right in front of Amin Al Ghul. Uh, Amin Al Ghul will probably be third. Whoa, maybe not so much, actually, if he keeps running off the road like that. Sean Morrison giving it everything he has on, on these final laps. He's going to be on older tires than Washer. He really needed to be in front of Washer. Um, as Washer merged back, uh, back onto the racetrack in order to have a shot here. He's about three or four seconds behind. He's got a few laps to make up time. He's been posting some of the fastest laps on the racetrack, despite being on those older tires, but it would be a hell of a feat to see that car make it to victory lane here today. Johnny Appleseed, the new leader in the double zero, hits along with the rest of the cars that stayed out. TJ Den, Mark Nutt, uh, with the gamble there, Carlin Dumi and Brandon Krasta, James O'Shea, Demir Bejenov, Marcus Stroman, and Pichu London. The, uh, Nicholas Samadio and Ophelia and Dumian all in. I believe Washer was actually held up in that number five car by the 007 of Pichu London coming into pit road. Yes, he was. 
Look at the rate at which Sean Morrison is closing in on that number five. Three to go for Chris Washer, but he's got the 06 car in his mirror now, and, and Sean Morrison is hungry for a win. Washer going for his third of the year. He's got the experience um, on the road courses. He, uh, he uh, won his race in Malaga. On board Morrison as he's closed in yet further. Uh, on lap number 14, across the stripe for two to go, and he's got, he's well within the draft of the number five car, and quickly closing in on his rear bumper. As we head into turn one, Washer's got to make sure he doesn't run off the course. Yes, he does. Morrison keeps it on the racing surface. Here comes Morrison, up the inside into turn number two, and I think he's got him clear into turn three, and Morrison back to the lead for the first time since lap number five. Washer trying his best to get back to the 06 as these two approach Spencer Fullerton in much the same way that Washer and Al Ghul approached Fullerton uh, a few laps before the, uh, a few laps ago, one lap before the pit stops. And of course it was Washer who had a lot of trouble getting by Fullerton. Fullerton holds his line and is always very clean when letting other drivers by, but uh, it's really, it's certainly difficult to make the move stick through turn six, and Morrison does that. And now it's going to be a real challenge for Washer, who actually ran off the course in turn number five, to get to Fullerton, overtake him, and have a shot at Morrison. It does appear Morrison up through seven, just three corners to go for him. A perfect line for the 06 of Sean Morrison. It's, it's clear sailing to the finish as he begins his long drive towards the start finish line for the final time. The 06 car of Sean Morrison has been surprisingly quick despite limited sponsorship, surprising many in the garage area. Started on outside pole, with a, made a ballsy pit call, uh, pitting very early on, and makes his way back to the front, and he will go to victory lane here in race number two in Grand Terre. Washer a fairly close second in that five car. He will actually get more points than Morrison did because he led the most laps, but um, he, I'm sure he'll be disappointed. He wanted that third win real bad, and he won't get that today. Uh, uh, Sawyer Girl with a very good final pit stop, and he makes his way by Al Ghul in the, in the final few laps to get third. A good podium effort for him. Amin Al Ghul, fourth position in that number 96 car. This keeps picking him off, picking off those top fives and tens at the road courses in particular. Alex Allen started on pole, will finish in fifth place. Mike Doan, a very good run in the 72 car, uh, just behind Alex Wheeler, sixth and seventh for those two drivers. Carl and Doomy in eighth in the one. Johnny Appleseed, ninth place in the double zero, and TJ Dent in the 18 machine will round out the top 10.